Hi everybody. So today we're going to talk about the dreaded slop error and how to deal with it. When it comes to using a laser rotary attachment, almost every one of us has encountered the dreaded not enough extended space or otherwise known as the slop SLOP over error. There's no need to panic however, this is just your machine telling you, hey, I think I've reached the limit of where I can move safely. Every laser machine has its maximum and minimum working size. And this is true of width and length, and it's based on the bed size of the laser. This is really just to prevent the laser head crashing into the side of your laser. And one important thing to understand right away is that the laser treats a round object just like it would a flat one. Imagine taking your tumbler, cutting it in half, and laying it out flat. That will be your engraving area. The laser doesn't actually know that the object is round, and it doesn't realize that it can rotate forever without ever crashing. The laser's coating will not allow the laser head to move past its zero coordinate. Else, it will think that it'll hit the wall. It also can't move past its maximum coordinate, whatever that might be depending on the laser bed, because that will think that it'll hit the wall. When the laser thinks it's going to hit a wall, it'll give you that slop error. And this is why so many people get that error. So before we proceed, we need to understand one important concept. And that is the origin. Simply put, the origin is the starting point from where you want to start laser cutting or engraving. However, what you intend and what the laser does aren't always the same thing. So let's say you make your design, upload it to the laser, position the red, the red laser pointer to where you want to start engraving, and then you press the start button. But instead, the laser moves to some random location, starts from there, and gives you a slop error message. Why? Well, when it comes to a starting point, you have some options. To be exact, you have nine possible origin positions in a laser software such as Lightburn, and it's important to understand what they mean and how a laser will interpret them. So let's take a look at Lightburn in regards to the origin position and how the laser is going to handle it. Let's open up the laser section in Lightburn and first check out the start from option. This pull down menu gives you three options, current position, user origin, absolute coordinates. You never want to have absolute coordinates when doing rotary engravings. Just kind of trust us on this. Current position is also something we don't always recommend and it will work sometimes, but it doesn't give you that absolute control of your machine that you're looking for. So that leaves us with user origin. It means that when you jog your laser head using a control pad and then hit origin button, the laser will remember this position as your user origin and will always treat it as a starting point that matches the starting point in light burn. This will work even if you accidentally move the laser head before engraving. Now let's look at the job origin options. As you can see, these are represented by nine dots. There are four in the corners, one in the middle and three in between. Let's load the graphics you want to engrave now. Remember, even though we're doing a flat engraving, the same rules will apply to your rotary. Let's start with the top right corner, which is, by the way, our favorite location. If you look at the graphics, you will notice a green dot appearing at, you guessed it, the right corner. And this is where the laser should start engraving if you follow the two conditions. First, the start from is set to user origin and light burn, as we discussed and you move your laser head to the start point as shown and press the origin button. Now try to visualize how the laser would move from start to finish of the job. Or even better, you can actually open and preview the simulation. Move the playback slider all the way to the start. See that plus sign? That's your laser head starting position. You'd expect it to just start engraving images from just there, line by line, right? Not really. Instead, the laser will move all the way down to the bottom of the engraving and it'll start engraving from there. Now this confuses most people because it's not really intuitive. Well, what can we say? Welcome to laser life. The explanation for this is the engraving is it's generally considered to be better going from the bottom up. While it makes sense for flat engraving, for circular or round objects, it doesn't matter if you start from the top or bottom. Still, as long as you remember that engraving always starts from the bottom by default, you'll be okay. 
On a side note, there's actually a trick that will make you engraving start from the top if you wanted to. You can actually do this by changing the scan angle to negative 180 degrees. Now, if you simulate engraving, it will indeed start from the right corner as it should. Now, it's a matter of personal preference if you want to do that, but for simplicity of this tutorial, let's change the scan angle back to zero degrees. Let's take a look at the next job origin point, bottom right. Notice how the green dot moved to the bottom right of the image. Let's look at the preview. If you positioned your laser head just like this and hit the origin button, then this is where it will start. Press start and it will start engraving your image line by line from that point. Simple enough, right? Now let's talk about the middle origin point. This one is a favorite for many people who engrave on tumblers. Click it and the green dot moves into the exact center of the rectangle that defines your image. So you know you will be in the center every time. However, you have to understand that the laser will never actually start engraving from this point. Instead, it will move to the bottom of the engraving area, unless, that is, you set the scan angle to negative 180, like we said, then it will move to the top, and only then will it start engraving from there. Let's take a look at the previous simulation. As you can see, it moved down and started engraving line by line. What's more, when it finishes engraving, the laser will again move to that central position and then stop. This, by the way, is not shown in the simulation. One thing I do want to mention is that some lasers have their home position in the top right corners, while others, like Thunder for instance, have the home position at the top left corner. So in the latter case, you might want to use the left origin points instead of right. With that behind us, Let's try a few engravings using different points of origin. First, we'll do the top right corner. Set start from user origin, choose job origin point, and send the file to the laser. Here's our engraving material. So we will match the starting position just like a light burn screen, where the green dot takes the place of our red laser dot. Just like so. Load the file from the controller memory. And this is very, very important. Press the origin button. We just told the laser that this is where our so-called green point is. And repeat after me, frame before engrave. <laughs> well, framing is such a cool and useful tool because it will actually outline the area that will be engraved. This framing square sequence has its own speed settings it's separate from everything else, and you can change that speed by pressing the speed button on the control panel. For a flat object like this, you want a kind of a decent speed of around 200 millimeters per second. But when you're doing engraving in the rotary, you gotta remember to slow it down. A bit more like 20 millimeters per second is great. Frame. Good. We outlined the area that we wanted to engrave and now we'll start the actual engraving. Note how the laser moved down and started from there, just like in our preview. Now, let's try the bottom right corner. Change the origin in Lightburn and send it to the laser. Now load the file in the laser. Next, Position the laser dot at the bottom right of your desired engraving area to match what you see on the screen and press the origin button. The laser will remember this spot as a starting point. You can now frame. Good. Here we go. Let's start engraving. And as you can see, the laser didn't make any additional movements before starting engraving right at that very same spot, just as we expected. Okay, now how about the central point? Sure, let's give it a shot. Let's go ahead and change in light burn and send it to the laser. We want to engrave this area, but we want to start in the middle. 
No problem. Position the laser in the middle and then hit origin. Now don't forget to load that file. Before we frame, can you guess how the laser is going to move? I predict that it will move to one of the corners, draw a rectangle around the engraving area and then come back to the center. Ready? Go. Ah, just as we thought. Hopefully, now you understand how the origin works and how we can actually have really predictable results. But what about that nasty slop error? Now that we know how to make the laser do exactly what we want, we can really set it up to fail, can't we? <laughs> All we have to do, just do some simple math. Okay, let's take a look at this graphic. It's 50 millimeters tall. So if we position the job origin to be in the center, that will be at 50 over 2, or 25 millimeters from the top and bottom. So to make the laser fail, we need to set the origin to be either less than 25 millimeters from the top or more than 25 from the bottom. The top is easier. If you move your gantry all the way up, it will read zero millimeters as the Y coordinate. That's your absolute top. And so the laser can't go past that. So let's position it around 20 millimeters from the top. Load our file and hit the origin button. Now, think what the laser will, will do when you try to frame. It will want to move to the top corner of the first engraving and then draw a rectangle from there, which means it will have to go to, to the top 25 millimeters, but it can only have 20 millimeters before it thinks it hits zero. Whoops, this should give it a slop error. Let's test it out. Press frame. Boom. Why slop error? Ah, it's different when you actually try to make it happen, right? But how do we fix it? Move down enough to give your laser that extra space. Indeed, if we move it to 30 millimeters and hit the origin button, the laser can now move all the way up and they have five millimeters of extra space. So let's give it a shot, frame it. No error this time, good. Uh, now the bottom limit is a little trickier because you have to know your machine's maximum area of engraving, but you can just move the gantry all the way down until it moves no more and there you'll see the maximum Y coordinates. Pretty easy, right? So in this case it's 450 millimeters. So to get the slop error near the bottom, we just need to position our origin point accordingly. Or in this case, around 430 millimeters would do it. So if we jog the Y to 430, hit the origin button and try framing it, we can predict that while the laser can move up and over, it won't be able to move down all the way past the 450 millimeter mark. So you should get that Y slop error. Let's give it a shot. Bingo. Just like with the Y axis, a laser can't move left or right past the minimum and maximum points. In that case, you will also get an error. It's going to be the slop X error. And now that you understand why slop errors do occur, how does it actually apply to the rotary? Well, as we mentioned earlier, the laser thinks of everything as really a flat engraving. So even though the gantry is not moving, the laser thinks it does move, even though your cup rotates instead. It will still update the Y coordinates as your cup spins. So actually it will follow the same exact limit rules. This means that if you're engraving a 50 millimeter tall object with the origin point set to the middle, the laser will need to be able to spin your cup 25 millimeters up and you guessed it, 25 millimeters down from the current position. And if that position is currently at let's say 20 millimeters, well, you can expect to get that slop error. The real solution here uh, is pretty easy. You basically jog the rotary wheels until you have enough movement space. Keep in mind 
that doing so with your object on the rotary might result in the center of engraving not being where you want it. For that not to be a problem, just remove and reposition the tumbler and then rotate slightly if needed. Well, we hope this tutorial was useful. Feel free to go back and rewatch any parts that weren't clear because we know we went fast in some areas. And don't be shy to provide some constructive feedback. Please leave your comments. We look forward to hearing them. Take care.